Sometimes as you look at a photo, there might be something in it that's distracting. Now, Photoshop is king here when it comes to content-aware erase and content-aware fill, but there is quite a bit you could still do right inside of Lightroom. In the case of this image here, the lower left corner is a bit distracting. I like the rest of the photo, but this tree just brushing into the lake just doesn't belong. What we're gonna do here is select our erase tool. We'll just go in and choose it. And we have two options, clone versus heal. In this case, I'm gonna try cloning to remove this area. Adjust the size of the brush and the feather. Now what you could do is paint over the area you want to remove. When you release, it will sample and try to find new pixels. And you can drag that. But you see the challenge here, and that is that the exposures are a little bit different between these areas. So let's delete that for a moment. Instead, let's try heal. And now what we'll do is brush over and let it analyze. And you see that it did a better job. We can set that. Now, we need a little bit more here. So I'm gonna brush, drag that in, and it looks pretty good. Now you see a believable removal of that tree. Let's look at another image. In this case, I wanna remove this distracting element. So what we can do is brush over that. Again, you could use clone versus heal. In this case, it's a pretty large brush. And you see it guessed and did so pretty badly. So let's undo that and choose a smaller brush here and be a little more precise. We'll zoom in, hold down the space bar to pan over and try to be a bit more accurate. Let's paint over that area. And you see it did that initial selection, not bad. I can continue to paint here. And sometimes you may find that smaller amounts being built up over time is actually better. Using a few strokes and let it sample and blend a couple of times can work better. But be sure you pay attention to where it samples from because that may lead to better results. Now what you're seeing is that I'm combining multiple strokes together. By letting it take a few passes, it's actually building this up nicely. So don't be afraid to use multiple strokes and tweak the sample point. As you do so, it tends to work pretty well. Just be careful as you brush that you don't move things around unless you intend to. You'll see those dots there. Now, in this case, that's a weird sample point. So let's move that to be a little bit more closer to the object and then we'll let it blend. As you see, if you build this up with several strokes, you can get pretty good results. I say pretty good, not because I'm not happy with them, but because I know that Photoshop can do quite a bit more. But as you see there, if you take the time to finesse those, you can start to adjust where it samples from and bring that in. Let's choose that one there and just gently move that sample point to a more in focus area. And that looks pretty good. Now, if you look at that, we were able to remove the plant successfully. Let's go back here and take a look at the side-by-side -side view. If we drag through, you see it comes back and there we go. We've managed to remove it. Let's take a look at those two and you can see the overall change, not bad. The key here though, is to remember that you use the right tool for the job. Lightroom is great for the quick fixes. If you find yourself really struggling with this or you want superior results, then send the image over to Photoshop with the photo open in Photoshop as smart object command and you can easily explore some of the content aware fill tools and the different content aware brushes that are in Photoshop that make it very easy to remove objects.